Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petite. Welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to make this gnome basket. It is fun little project that is suitable for an intermediate sewist or anyone that is comfortable with sewing rounded or curved seams. This is a relatively quick project that requires very minimal amount of fabric and you can download the free pattern from my website. This gnome basket features a hat that sits on top of the gnome, so you can hide your trinkets and your chocolates from anyone. I made the Christmas version, so my hat is red. You can use any color you like. And I used these little pom-poms on top to add a little bit of a detail. The basket itself has a circle base and a little fluffy beard with a tiny nose. And the main compartment is fully lined. If you would like to learn how to make this non-basket, then keep on watching. To complete today's project, you will need some external fabric and lining fabric and a small piece of fur, uh, preferably with a long hair, like this one here, you can see. In today's project, I'm using this velvet fabric to do the hat and for the main body I'm going to use this faux leather and for the lining I'm using a waterproof canvas today. Depending on the type of the fabric you're going to use you might need to interface it first with some woven interfacing. I am going to use the woven interfacing only on my velvet fabric because it is very lightweight and also it is stretchy. Uh, which I don't really want on my hat. So applying this woven interfacing to a stretchy fabric like this one is very good because it will prevent it from stretching. If you're using quite lightweight fabric, uh, like quilting cotton or like this uh, for leather that I'm using today is quite lightweight and flimsy, you will need to add some stabilizer to your fabric. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to apply Decoville light to all of my pieces uh, but you can probably use something like uh, maybe a foam or anything else that is similar that will give you this body and this sturdiness. To give you an example this gnome was made out of cork fabric for the main body and faux leather similar to this one for the hat and I also used a waterproof canvas uh, for the lining however this waterproof canvas uh, it is more sturdy as you see than for example the one that I'm going to use today this one is more lightweight and uh, it doesn't have as much stability to it so it doesn't stand on itself like for example this waterproof canvas here so for this particular hat i did not fuse for leather with any any of the stabilizers because when i attached this waterproof uh, lining here i realized that the hat stands by itself and i don't need any further stabilizer to it However, because I'm using this stretch velvet fabric today, I already made one from the same fabric and I also used waterproof canvas, but this one is very lightweight, even more lightweight than the one I'm going to use today. I had to interface it to give this stability so the hat stands on itself. Um, if you don't, obviously the hat will be very flimsy and you won't be able to just put it on top of your basket. You will also need something that will work as a nose and the pompon on top of your hat. So you could do it yourself. If you if you know how to do a pompon, you can make it yourself. Or you can use a button, some sort of beads or anything similar that you might have on hand if you don't want to buy something specific. For this project, I bought pompon like this because the size of it works really nice for this particular project. I got two colors, one black, one white. The white obviously goes on top of the hat and the black will be the nose. You'll also need some snips and scissors, your favorite marking tools, 
Seam Ripper is always good to have on hand in case if something goes wrong. Uh, I'm going to use the Corner Shaper today as well. This tool is very handy, especially when you're working with corners like this and you can't really put your hand in to push it through. This is very helpful then. You'll need obviously some sort of clips or pins to hold your fabric in place. I always like to have an owl on hand to help me guide the fabric underneath the machine. And you might need a hand needle and a thread if you're working with the pompons like this or a button for example and you need to stitch it to your fabric. Otherwise you can always try to use a glue. This is exactly what I've done on this particular one. You need to cut one beard from your fur fabric, one base from your external fabric and from your lining fabric, one hat for, from your external fabric and one from your lining fabric, and one main body from your external and your lining fabric. As you can see, I already interfaced all my pieces that, knew, that required interfacing or stabilizing. Uh, as I said, I used Decoville Light to, on my external pieces. And because I'm using waterproof canvas for my lining and it's sturdy enough and it's not stretchy, I did not use any interfacing or stabilizer. However, as mentioned, I did interface my hat, my velvet fabric, with the woven interfacing first, and then I applied Decoville Light. Um, I, did up, I did remove the seam allowance to make it easier for my machine to sew it through, but if your machine can handle it, you can apply the stabilizer to the entire pattern piece. If you ever worked with the fur fabric, you will know that you can't just cut this, the fabric straight like you would any other fabric. If you do, uh, you won't have those nice long hair for your beard. Uh, and the fabric will have short hair underneath. I don't know if you can see that here. I just cut this edge normally. So as you see, all the hair are here at the same length. It's the same way like you would cut your own hair. To produce nice looking and more natural looking beard, you need to take your pattern piece and the fabric that the hair is attached to will have to be the size of that pattern piece. So you're only cutting the fabric and not the actual hair. I will show you in a second what I mean. Whenever you take your fur, you need to check which direction the, the hair wants to go naturally. I always like to mark on the back of my fabric, which direction my hair goes. So I know I will cut the fabric the right way. Once you know that, you're going to take your pattern piece and a marking pen, and then you're going to transfer the pattern on the back of that fabric. Now you're going to take some sort of sharp scissors. I like to use a smaller scissors for that. We're only going to use the end of our scissors. You're not going to cut nice long, strokes you're only going to do a little snips so for that i always like to brush the hair lay it flat on the surface then i take my scissors and i'm only going to cut the fabric that the hair is attached to so when i cut the fabric i try to lift the fabric with the tip of my scissors so you're going to do small snips only trying not to cut the hair underneath. So now, if I just pull this, you will notice that my hair is nice and long. Okay, we have our beard cut out. Now I'm going to mark a midpoint on, along the top edge. Just like that. So I know where is the center. And then I'm going to measure about three centimeter from that top edge. Try to be in the center. And we're going to mark the placement for our nose. So I'm going to move the hair away. Then I'm going to take one of my pompons 
and a hand needle and some thread and I'm going to attach the pompon to the beard. Before we proceed further to attach the beard to the main panel, uh, what I like to do is to just trim the hair from, from the seam allowance along that top edge. So the seam allowance is one centimeter, so I like to just trim just the hair, not the, not the fabric, just along that top edge. Because we don't really need, we don't really need that hair in our seam allowance. It's just to reduce the bulk. All right, just like that. I'm just going to take all that hair away. Now we're going to take your external main body and it's good practice to mark midpoints along the top and bottom edge. So to do that, you're going to fold the fabric in half and then you can use scissors to just cut a little notches just like I've done here otherwise just use a pen and you can just mark lines whichever whichever way is easier for you so grab your beard and matching the midpoints you're going to place the beard on the right side of the fabric we can just clip that in place just like that then we're going to sew along the beard about two millimeters from the edge. However, when you get to those curved edges, you're going to have to move the hair out from underneath of the sewing machine. So you're going to have to take your time and just brush the hair away from your sewing foot so you can just stitch along that edge here. Now we're going to take your lining main body and with right sides facing each other we're going to place the lining on top of the external piece. You need to line up the top edge and clip that in place. Here we go, just like that. We're going to sew the seam using one centimeter seam allowance. Alright, once you have that top seam stitched, you can either use a pinking shears to get the seam allowance or you can just use the regular scissors to cut a little triangles. So you want to, be, to make sure our top seam lies nice and flat, it's good to cut little triangles like this all around the seam allowance. Now you're going to open the panel you can press the seam allowance towards the lining and then we're going to stitch close to the edge just on top of the lining making sure we catch the seam allowance underneath You're going to bring those two side seams together just like that line up the external edges and then the lining edges make sure you match the seam and clip that in place all right we're going to sew the seam using one centimeter seam allowance however on the lining we're going to have to leave an opening uh, to make sure that we can turn the entire basket right side out later on Now we can open the seam allowance and press it flat. I like to use my tailor's ham for this, so I can just insert it, open the seam, and then just press it flat. 
because this is for leather I'm not going to press the seam allowance I'm just going to use my fingers instead we already have four notches marked on our main body and we have four notches marked on our base we're going to match them first so you're going to place the right sides together then you can just continue clipping around the base I found it easier if I just make a little snippets along the bottom edge of our main body. This will make the process of aligning that round base much easier because we can flatten the seam allowance. There you go, just like that. Now we're going to sew the seam using one centimeter seam allowance. Then we're going to repeat the process for the lining base. So if you want, you can take your lining piece now and with right sides together again, line up those four notches and clip that in place. This is exactly what I'm going to do now, so I can sew both seams at the same time. If you prefer more snugly lining inside your basket, you might want to increase the seam allowance here. So the usual seam allowance will be one centimeter. You could increase it to, for example, 12 or 15 millimeters um, if you want. Um, however, I'm just going to stitch it as it is using one centimeter because it doesn't really bother me much if the lining is a little bit loose in my basket. Once you attach both of your lining and external base panels, again you're going to trim the seam allowance the same way we've done on our top edge. So if you, know, if you have normal scissors you're going to do little triangles or use your pinking shears. Okay, now using the opening in our lining we're going to turn the basket right side out. It should look something like this. Now we can grab the lining out of the basket and just close that opening in that seam. You can just insert the lining into the basket now. And if you need to, you can just give the basket final press press that top seam flat as well if you have to and you can give a little brush to your beard so when you do that this portion of our non-basket is completed now we're going to work on our hat take your external hat and if you're applying some stabilizer I would highly recommend cutting the top edge of the stabilizer away from that tip uh, to reduce the bulk otherwise it will be very difficult to have a nice and pointy end uh, to your hat you're going to fold the hat right sides together and we're going to line up that straight edge clip that in place and then we can sew the seam using one centimeter seam allowance All right, I've got the seam stitched. You can just take a scissors and cut the seam allowance as close as possible to that stitching line just around the tip. You don't have to you don't have to worry about the rest. For the remaining seam allowance, you're going to open it and then we can just press it flat. Now you're going to take the lining piece and again right sides together, you're going to fold it in half line up that straight edge and clip it in place 
Instead of using one centimeter seam allowance throughout the entire seam, what I like to do is to, I like to increase the seam allowance slightly uh, at the tip of the hat. So this is the hat. This is the, t the top of my hat, the, where the tip is, where the pompon will be. So instead of sewing the entire seam using one centimeter seam allowance, the, like we've done on the external pieces, I like to start at the bottom with one centimeter seam allowance, stitch, again going to leave an opening and then I'm going to continue stitching using about 12 to 15 millimeter seam allowance. I left an opening in my seam, just here. Again, I'm going to trim just the tip. And now we're going to open the seam allowance and press it flat. All right, so you're going to take your external hat and your lining hat and turn the lining hat right side out. So the right side of the fabric on the lining is facing the right side of the external hat. You're going to insert the lining into the hat, line up that seam and we're going to clip those two pieces together. You're going to sew the seam around using one centimeter seam allowance. Again, we can just trim the seam allowance around that seam. Now using the opening in our lining, turn the hat right side out. And we're going to close that opening in our lining seam. The next thing to do is to insert our lining into the hat. And if you want, you can just press that finished seam or you can just use clips to hold that in place. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew about five millimeters from the edge all around the hat. I have completed the hat. The last thing to do is to attach the pompon to the top of our hat. All right, and just like that, your non basket is completed. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like to see more videos like this one, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends.